Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everyone, for, for your time. Thank you for joining. Uh, welcome to our, our session here. So as you know, uh, Leica launched uh, the new SL2S uh, a few days ago. So today we have the privilege to have Lucas, Lucas Schmidt from uh, the Leica Camera Asia Pacific office from Singapore. He will, um, he will moderate and, 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 uh, and will moderate the session. Um, we also have our three ambassadors here who are lucky enough to, to do the initial trial, uh, Tommy, Anja, and Mario. So thank you again for your, for your time. Uh, without further ado, I, I shall pass uh, this over to Lucas. If you have any questions, please share in the chat group. Uh, and then we will address it either in between the session or after the session. Thank you again for for joining and and um, enjoy yourself, Lucas. Thank you, Lucas. Go ahead. Okay, Bernard. Thank you very much, <clears throat> and welcome from from my side to all of you. Um, glad to be with you. My first session with Indonesia, actually. So the session will be split in two parts. Uh, first of all, we will do a kind of recap on the SL system. And we will have a look on the new product. I will show you the product specs and the new features. And the second part will be the user sharing where we have uh, uh, three photographers over who had the opportunity to be one of the very first to get the SL2S in their hands and um, yeah, shoot with it. And they are here with us today to share their experience and of course their photos. As Bernard already mentioned, uh, if you have a question, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, if you have a question, just type it in, in the chat box and then I will answer it by myself or I will read it out to our photographers. So, <clears throat> I don't know if you, if you already have um, joined one of our uh, sessions in Singapore or Malaysia. So, what we have done uh, during the last two sessions is always doing a small recap um, because I think it's good to understand what we are talking about, because when it comes to the SL system, is not only a camera, actually. In 2015, Leica um, brought the SL, first SL camera to the market. And by bringing in this one, is not only bringing in a camera, like a compact camera, for example, it is the commitment to, um, yeah, give the customers the opportunity for a whole new camera system. What was the reason for the SL? There was actually two. There was kind of a gap between the S system, our medium format system and the M system. And uh, as you know, those products are both more or less niche products because the M is manual focusing rangefinder and the S system is um, medium format. And in between, there was something missing and uh, a lot of professional photographers they came to us and say like i really would like to use a leica but um, in your portfolio there is nothing really that is or that fits my needs actually and with the sl system we came up with a um, <clears throat> fast performant full frame mirrorless autofocus system and um, this camera is meant to be the workhorse for a photographer so it's uh, precise, fast, reliable. Um, it gives you a good variety of, of lenses and accessories um, for a professional use. And this was our approach, how we tried to um, fill in the gap between the S system and the M system. The second um, main idea was to actually give the customers the opportunity to reuse their R lenses because um, we had a lot of them who say, I still have some R lenses at home and they are beautiful. I like them, but um, I don't have anything on hand at the moment from Leica uh, where I can use my old R lenses. And with the SL, actually with the SL system, you were now able to do that. And this was, I think, another very big reason uh, for us to, to introduce the SL system. And in terms of um, the market, I think what we what we did here with the SL system is uh, basically trying to to end the era of DSLR cameras. Because what is the what is the reason for a DSLR camera? You look through the lens, 
uh, you have your picture in an optical viewfinder and a lot of people they really like that they see the image as it is because it is coming directly through the lens and they see basically what they get and with an electronic viewfinder uh, they always complained yeah the, but the picture is laggy um, there's latency time all of this uh, it doesn't look natural the first viewfinder in the in the sl system already came up with 4.4 megapixels and the image was so crispy sharp and clear that when you look through it it actually looked like an optical viewfinder image plus you have all the inf uh, all the advantages from an electronic viewfinder and by saying that i think this is a big thing because this makes using a dslr camera obsolete anymore because you you don't or i mean of course we have still the advantage but you also have these these advantages through an electronic viewfinder and you have another advantage that you can make for example the body slimmer because you don't need to have the mirror anymore inside the camera and um, from my point of view i think dslr cameras will be slowly taken out from the market and, and um, mirrorless uh, cameras with an electronic viewfinder will definitely be the future and i think um, leica is is uh, very well set up in this area with the leica sl system Then in 2018, we announced the L-Mount Alliance. Um, it's not a product actually, but it's a, as the name says, alliance between Leica, Panasonic and Sigma. And by this alliance, uh, our partners, Panasonic and Sigma, are allowed to share the same lens mount as we're using, which is the L-Mount. And as you may guess, L in this case stands for Leica mount. So the Leica mount was initially designed to have a mount which is suitable for uh, high performance full frame autofocus lenses and also APS-C lenses. So you know our Leica CL and the TL, they are also sharing this mount. And our, our partners, Panasonic and Sigma, they, they came up to us, they approached us and say, um, there's actually no other way at the moment to make it better and uh, you have created a mount here that is that is future proofed and is um, ready for all of these kind of applications and of course people asked in the beginning why do you open up your system to competitors i mean are you not afraid that uh, people will go for a panasonic lens or a sigma lens instead of buying a leica lens and we say maybe this this can happen but this Elmont Alliance is only for our customers to give them um, more flexibility and more choice selection in terms of lenses because a small camera like a small company like Leica would not be able to release 10 or 15 lenses at the same time and this opportunity also using other lenses in ranges for example when you cannot find a focal length in the Leica range say the super tailor lenses for example then we give you the opportunity to use another lens and of course hoping to convince you to say okay i go for the sl system even if i use a sigma lens or the other way around for people who are using a panasonic camera they can also attach um, leica lenses on their camera so we think that uh, this l mount alliance has um, definitely only advantages for our customers, but of course also advantages for, for us and our partners um, by sharing this mount. And then in 2019, we introduced the second generation of the SL, which was the Leica SL2. And the Leica SL2, um, from my point of view, is still the best and performant camera that we have in the Leica portfolio because what this camera offers in terms of um, technical features, the first SL was already very good, but uh, we kept all of this, with, which was successful and uh, still top up so many new features in the SL2 system. So for example, in the SL2, you have uh, in-body stabilization, you have a better viewfinder, uh, you have a faster autofocus, you have a faster frame rate. Um, and 
this is what what I would say the the workhorse that you that you need over here. So there's uh, hopefully no needs that this camera doesn't uh, really fulfill. And as I said, I think it's still uh, when it comes to performance and of course resolution. The resolution has been doubled uh, up to 47 megapixel. Um, it's still yeah our our premium flagship camera. And today uh, we want to introduce you a new family member for this system, which is the Leica SL2S. The Leica SL2S is not the successor of the Leica SL2, it's actually right beside. So now you have two different versions of cameras and you can decide which one is more suitable for you and then you go for it. So um, that's what I mentioned in the beginning, always about flexibility and choice selection um, you don't have to only stick with one choice. Now you can select between the Leica SL2 or the Leica SL2S. So what is the Leica SL2S about? Uh, in the Leica SL2S, we have a 24 megapixel BSI sensor. This is a newly developed sensor. And as you can see, compared to the Leica SL2, it has uh, back 24 megapixels and the Leica, S, uh, Leica SL2 has 47. And why do you want to go with 24 instead of 47? There's a lot of advantages that comes up with a smaller amount of megapixels. So let's say if you don't need 47 and you say, I'm totally fine with 24, um, then you, you get several advantages by reducing the amount. So for example, you have a faster camera. With the Leica SL2, you can shoot up to 20 fri uh, 25 frames per second DNG, which is basically the frame rate of a video. So uh, you, you need to imagine like 25 frames per second DNG, uh, which kind of quality you get out from it. It's, it's the same as, as if you would record a video, actually. Uh, we have now four gigabyte internal memory buffer, which means you can shoot JPEG almost up to infinity. So there is no restriction anymore in buffering uh, JPEG. You can shoot until your SD card is full, actually. Then low light performance. Um, as you know, when, when you have the same sensor size, which is full frame, and you go from 47 to 24, of course, every pixel gets bigger. And when you have a bigger pixel, it can collect more light. And by saying that, um, we can also improve the ISO performance, which we have done here because now the ISO performance is up to 100,000. I'm going to show you a little bit about that later because ISO is only a number. You need to see what it's about. The second biggest thing about the SL2S is not only the speed, it's also the video capability. The Leica SL2 already was or is very good in video. And uh, the Leica SL2S is even more a beast when it comes to video. Um, with the Leica SL2S, you can now record 4K video full frame um, at 30 frames per second in 10 bit 422 internally. And also Cine 4K in uh, 30 frames per second, 10 bit also internally. And of course, you can also increase the, the frame rate when you use an uh, HDMI recorder. For people who are really into um, professional or advanced video, uh, videography, video application, uh, we have integrated here, um, of course, the airlock, as you already know from the Leica SL2. And now we are coming up with two new lookup tables, uh, which I also will show you in a while. Then this camera is, I think, the very first Leica camera with there's no restriction in um the length of the video so as you know our other cameras they are classified as photo um cameras and that's why they have to stop at 29 minutes and 95 seconds with the leica sl2s uh, you don't have that limitation anymore so you can record as long as you want as your sd card is full or your uh, your um, external hdmi recorder another thing which was already introduced i think five, six days ago is that we are now um, cooperating with Capture One. So uh, our professional cameras, the Leica SL2, the Leica S3, and uh, the, of course the Leica SL2S are now also supported by Capture One. 
and the rest of the features that you see there on the side, um, you already know from the from the Leica XL2. And as I say, we um, kept everything that was already successful in Leica SL2. So uh, you don't have to make a compromise when you go for the SL2S. You don't have to think this is a downgraded camera compared to the SL2. Actually, it's, it's the opposite. It's an upgraded camera compared to the SL2. The only thing that you need to ask yourself is, do I need 47 megapixels or can I work with 24 megapixels? This is the question that you have to ask yourself. Few more words, a few more words about uh, um, the video capability. So what is very interesting in my opinion is that you are not buying only a photo camera, but also a uh, fully um, professional video camera. And, and this is really, this is not marketing blah, blah. This is, you can shoot professional video content with those, uh, with this camera. Actually, our, um, our photographers uh, that we are having today, they also wanted to, to show you today some, some video content. Um, unfortunately, Zoom is not the right platform to share that. So we have tried that and also wanted to, to give you some content, but um, it would be laggy if we do it through Zoom. So, um, but we will share some, some links later uh, where you can have a look on this content by yourself and, and uh, yeah, definitely better quality. So uh, only a couple of words about the, uh, the lookup table because um, I try to try to explain uh, this, that it doesn't sound totally wrong. Uh, and I hope if you have, or if, if there's professional videographers here with us that you, that you forgive me, um, that I explain it for, for everybody. A lookup table is more or less like an Instagram filter. So uh, of course it's not a very precise description, so, but this is a very good way that you can imagine how it works. So. For example, if we look at the airlock, you see a grayish um, picture over here. And this is recorded in that way to do better color grading afterwards. Because let's say you have an um, area in your video which is overexposed. It has too many whites or underexposed, too many blacks. Then you cannot color grade this area anymore. And for example, the airlock is a, is a way to um, make the picture a little bit softer and decrease the um, the, got the word the dynamic range and uh, the so that you that you have if by having more gray areas actually that you can bring back the color afterwards better and now with the two lookup tables that we have integrated in the camera which is classic and natural you can already foresee now how your final content would look like with a certain color settings and by an upcoming firmware update uh, in the first half of next year, uh, you will also be able to upload your own lookup tables to the camera. So then you can use whatever lookup table you are used to and can immediately see if I shoot my scenery in with this color grading, it would look like this. You don't have to imagine how it would look like. You definitely um, immediately see it on the screen how it would look like. So then ISO performance, I already uh, mentioned the 100,000 ISO, but I think it's always good to um, see real pictures. What does it mean? Because ISO is only a number and a lot of cameras advertise with ISO 100,000 or even more. This picture is shot with ISO 64,000. This is not a, like one zero too much. It is actually 64,000. And what you see here is that it is possible to shoot even in very high ISO. I know there are some people who say, I, I don't want to have any noise at all in my pictures. Then of course, don't use it. But you see, even the noise that you have here, which you, you cannot avoid in an ISO range of 64,000, even the noise that you have in these areas, when you zoom in up to 100% crop, you see it, of course. I mean, this would be the initial picture. Then you don't even see it so much, only a little bit. And from my personal opinion, it is beautiful. For, for that high ISO range, it, it shows that you can operate with this. And you have to imagine now what possibilities do you have with the combination of certain features. So the IBIS uh, image stabilization inside, 
you can decrease um, by 5.5 stops plus you have now a better ISO performance and you can already see like in what um, areas you can work now where it's almost dark and the camera is able to do that because you can work on a very low shutter speed plus on a very high ISO and this makes this camera perfect for, for low light. Then um, I would like to say something about the protection. So as the Leica SL2 also, the Leica SL2S is um, rated on an IP54, which means when you look at the Q2, which is a compact camera, which means has a fixed lens, cannot change the lens. Q2 has an IP rating of 52, which is already very good. But here we have a system camera, an open system with an IP rating of 54 which means you, this camera is so well protected against dust, spray water, uh, heat, cold, whatever. When I did product demonstration, um, when we came up with the SL2 and also with this one, I take the camera and I pour a glass of water over the camera. Of course, we don't recommend everybody to do this, but it shows that it's possible. So which means you can go outside in a heavy rain, which happens a lot here in, in the area where we are living. And you don't have to worry about that your camera will be damaged. And um, this one you don't have in the majority of other cameras. So whenever it rains, you see the photographers either you know, having an extra umbrella over their camera or they are going inside. And with the Leica SL system now, you don't have to worry about damaging your camera. This one I already mentioned, the collaboration now with Capture One. And also we think this is a very good um, yeah, news for our customers now, because we had actually some people who say, I really would like to shift to the SL system, but I won't because I use Capture One and you guys are not supporting Capture One. So now there's no excuse anymore uh, not to go for the SL system, honestly, because we have uh, fully support in Adobe Lightroom and Capture One, which are the two main uh, tools for, uh, for editing for the majority of all photographers. And uh, we think this is also a big, um, a big uh, argument to convince those who were probably interested in the system, but by only using Capture One, say, no, this is holding me back. And now it's not holding you back anymore. I already said something about the L-Mount Alliance. So um, the thing is, we, we, we thought initially that uh, we were not able to provide enough lenses. But if you look on the selection of lenses that we already have, I think for a, for a small company like Leica, it's pretty amazing. So what do we already have in our system? We have five uh, prime lenses for the, for the SL, which is the 51.4, an exceptional lens for yeah, low light shooting, portrait shooting, uh, and then we have our four so-called uh, APO lenses. Uh, so they are all APO lenses and they have all an aperture 2.0 and they are amazing. Really, they are freaking amazing. Uh, if you are interested in lenses, take a look at the um, MTF curves of the lenses and compare it if you want, for example, with M lenses. You know M lenses are already very, very good, but these uh, lenses, in terms of performance, they currently outperform everything. And they are small, compact, and uh, in combination with the SL2, I think there's a very good, uh, very good balance um, system there. So what do we have? 35, 50, 75, and 90. And by um, next year, we will also introduce three uh, more wide angle lenses, which would be 28, 24, and 21 millimeter. And they also will be all APO lenses and having the same size and weight than those lenses that we already have. Then we have three zoom lenses, which is our wide angle zoom, the 16 to 35. Our very first lens, the 24 90, which is, in my opinion, the um, most flexible lens for the SL system because uh, it covers up a huge range that the majority of the photographers is working in from a little bit wide angle to a little bit zoom. So when you want to have something very flexible and you don't want to change your lenses, 
then go for the 2490. This is the, the most versatile lens of all. And then our, our tailor lens, the 90 to 280 millimeter. And by looking at the other lenses from Leica that you can use, it's quite amazing that with a new mount like the L mount, you can use almost every single Leica lens in our portfolio. There's only, I think, a handful of lenses that you cannot use, but you can use, of course, all the eight SL lenses. Then the seven TL lenses, which are also very nice. For example, we have a 60 millimeter macro lens. When you, when you do want to do macro photography, you can use the 60 millimeter. We have over 70 M lenses, which you can use. And we have heard from a lot of people that they really enjoy using the M lenses on the SL system because they say, when I look through the viewfinder, um, and working with the magnification or the focus picking, uh, then it's even easier for me to uh, to focus my pics uh, my pictures and have having even um, yeah pictures with the knock lux pinpoint sharp. Then of course our uh, our S lenses for the medium uh, format you can also use with an adapter. You can use fifty one R lenses. And you can use all our Cine lenses. So as I said, if you're interested in photography, um, take a look at our uh, partner company, Light Cine. They are producing uh, lenses for uh, a cinematographic application. And uh, there's actually, I didn't even know that before, but there's an Oscar also for the, for the technical uh, part of, a, of a filmmaking. And they actually won an Oscar for their quality of lenses. And this one is made with a Sigma lens. Um, yeah, we are here in a, in a Leica um, product introduction session and we are talking about Sigma lenses. This one is a 400 millimeter and you know that you cannot find those uh, range in the Leica uh, range because when we would bring up a 400 millimeter SL lens with the same standards as we are doing with our other lenses, it would probably be one meter long, four kilos, uh, big and probably 50,000 K expensive. So this is not something that, that we can provide maybe in the future, but at the moment, this is not the range where Leica is known for. We are known for our small, compact, high performance prime lenses and also a little bit zoom lenses. If you need to have a 400 millimeter lens, you can go for a Sigma. And for example, what you see over here, even with a 400 millimeter from Sigma, you still have a very, uh, sharp image and also a very nice uh, bouquet in the background. So you don't have to worry about that the performance of those lenses will drop. I mean, they don't reach the same performance as all lenses, but they are almost at the same level. And this one is for your information, if you already uh, cannot wait to make the, the first purchase of the Leica SL2S. On the first half of 2021, we will come also with a um, massive firmware update for this camera, which will be the first point is, in my opinion, the most important one is a huge improvement in the uh, focus focusing. So it will have a super, super, super good upgrade for, uh, for the detection and also the speed of the focus. And all the other features that you see over here, um, they will all be for the video uh, application. So if you are really into uh, professional video making, these upgrades will be probably very interesting for you. Okay, that's uh, the boring part from my side, all the, the technical um, nerdy stuff. And now we are doing the, the fun part of the session, which will be the user experience. So. Um, I don't think I ever had a session where we actually had uh, four different photographers in one session. So we have Davy, Angel, Mario, and Tommy with us. And as I said in the beginning, they um, all had the opportunity to um, test the Leica SL2S as one of the first one. And uh, yeah, we will have a look on their pictures today and also their experience. So Daffy will join later, Lucas. Apologize. Sorry, what? Daffy will join later. Yeah, so okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Mario and Tom. Yeah. yeah, anyway, we are starting uh, with Mario. So, welcome. Mario, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so, um, Mario, would you like to say some something before we have a look on, on your pictures? Um, 
about your first approach to the Leica SL2 and what kind of idea did you had to, to shoot? Okay, so uh, first, uh, when I was informed by the Leica store that uh, we're gonna have a new camera, and then when I saw the specs, uh, I was very excited because um, I'm, a, I'm a run and gun shooter uh, on the field. So I shoot a lot of uh, images. Uh, so 24 megapixel camera is uh, perfect for me. Um, and then uh, since it's also a hybrid camera uh, and I also shoot photo and video at the same time. So uh, I think uh, it's, it, it fits perfectly after the SL2 because SL2 is more like a studio camera and SL2S is more like uh, on the field camera uh, to my opinion. So um, uh, after a few days of uh, using the camera, um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good camera, yeah? It's a very good camera. Uh, especially the ISO, mm -hmm. I, I pushed the ISO up to uh, 100,000. Mm -hmm. it, it has noise, but of course, I think it's very usable. So um, in the video, uh, the ISO is only up to 50,000 and it still helps a lot because I shoot, uh, I'm an architectural photographer, I shoot a lot of interiors. Mm -hmm and always in a dark environment. So uh, the, the high ISO performance uh, helps me a lot on my work. So uh, by, by thing I should architectural, you, you probably this is the, um, your idea of, of architecture. So inside, outside, and seems like you enjoy shooting buildings. Yes, yes. And oftentimes, yeah. um, isn't it important for you to have a high resolution because you say 24 megapixels is enough for you. So uh, what, what is the reason for that, that you say I'm, I'm totally fine with 24? Because uh, my clientele uh, mostly doesn't use the picture for big prints. Mm -hmm. So mostly only for web use or maybe just magazine. So yeah, 24 megapixels is more than enough for my clientele. Uh, this one over here, did you, did you edit the pictures that you shoot? Um, and if yes, what did you do? Or what did you don't need to do? Yes, uh, in this picture, I only added a bit of uh, sun flares, like a sunset effect. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, it's, it's uh, when I was shooting, the weather was like on and off. So, sun and uh sun and cloudy sun and cloudy and finally at the last minute the sun came out a bit so i only exaggerate a bit on the sun part but uh the rest is the original image i think um it it uh it can take a backlight situation very good i don't see any um any any chromatic aberrations on the backlight and then and the gradation is just very nice i guess it's because of the dynamic range it has 14 stops uh, am i right lucas uh 14 yeah 14 or 15 um but it, one of those 14 or 15. yeah yeah so the gradation of the picture is very nice what kind of lens do you prefer when it comes to architectural shooting? You, you always need a wide angle lens or it doesn't matter? Uh, sometimes uh, or most of the time is wide angle lens. But when I'm shooting outside from for these images, I'm using the 24 and 90, including these images where I, uh, this image, the black and white image, mm -hmm. this one, I, I tried the 25 frames per second um, features. Mm -hmm. So when I was shooting this, uh, this, this one is my assistant running because uh, he was going to take something from me. But uh, when I look at the composition, it's very nice. So, so, I, sh I, so I shoot the, the image, the, uh, I shoot it continuously. I think I have around 40 or 50 images. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually it's like a movie. 
Yeah, that, that's what I said with the frame rate of 25. When you display them very fast uh, after each other, it looks like uh, it's a slow mo video. Yes. So when you when you scroll the dial, it's like playing a movie in your in your camera. So that's very nice. You will never miss a moment with it. And you you forced uh, your assistant to cross a very busy <laughs> just to get a nice shot. Sort of. <laughs> that's part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So also also for for this image, um, actually this image is um, it has a quite also a strong backlight situation. So I put the shadows in the in the DNG files, and it can recover the shadows nicely. And also on the sky, where, where uh, uh, when you see on the on the left uh, red umbrella here on the top of the red umbrella. It's a little bit white, but actually, if you see closer, it, it still has some detail. So, uh, the dynamic range is very nice on this camera. So this one, the shot, I think initially you you probably underexposed, and then you brought back the the darker um, areas, and there's no loss in anything. Yes, correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, Mario. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, because we have four uh, four photographers today, we we don't have much time for for everyone. But um, for for your video content, uh, as I said um, earlier, we are not able to show that. But uh, we will provide you with the with the necessary links, and then you can have a look by yourself on the video content. Then we are going into the next one. Tommy, welcome. Hi, Lucas. Good to see you and everyone here. Thank you for joining us. First question: Did this lady know that you uh, take photos of her, or did you hide in the, in the plants? <laughs> I I love I love the uh, voyeurism uh, style of of portraiture in black and white. But this one is actually my wife. She's, oh, okay. she's uh, doing um, a yoga teacher training program online through Zoom and uh, online classes. And because mostly we stay at home during this pandemic. Uh, quarantine so my concept was just her yoga in our backyard so what's the experience how was it and at the same, same time why why black and white I love all types of photography but uh, my main uh, interest is in uh, portraiture uh, and in black and white because I th think sometimes colors can be distracting uh, because uh, the human eye can can get pulled in many different directions depending who your audience is, but when it's black and white, it's uh, it it sort of concentrate on what you want to the, the message you want the audience to see. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I love black and white photography. It's it's honest and it's it's more real, and I think you can connect to the photo uh, much better with black and white. Mm -hmm. And with this uh, with the SL. Uh, I love how I can use the M lens, especially the Noctilux wide open at um, 0 0.95. So I mean, I, I'm, what's that? This picture was made with a Noctilux? Yes, yes, it's made with the Noctilux. Um, Amazing, very, very. I, thank you, thank you. I love it on, on M cameras as well, but M cameras uh, is restrictive in, in terms of when I shoot outdoors and it's uh, really bright, you know, daylight, the shutter speed is only until uh, one over 8,000, if I'm not mistaken. So the picture will be overexposed unless you put the uh, ND filters. Mm -hmm. uh, but with SL, uh, even the first one, what I love is that it has the uh, electronic shutter. Mm -hmm. So makes it double. So uh, one over sixteen hundred, I think. Uh, and then for the SL two and SLS, I think it's forty thousand. Is it one of one per forty thousand? The shutter. Yeah, on the SL SL two is one over uh, forty, and the SL two S yes. is one over sixteen. This is the yes, sixteen thousand. So you have no problem shooting outdoors with the wide open Noctilux. And with this, you know, uh, when I was small, I, I love to be able to paint. 
but I, I can never paint. So uh, that's why my passion started with photography. That's why with this, everything, I love everything natural. So I, when I see like uh, the plants or the grass, I, I find it to use it as the foreground, you know, to make it the dreamy effect if, if you have, um, when you use like the, the brush in, in painting. So when I shoot, I always have that, I try to have that foreground and then the, the subject and then the background. So um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I love using the SL2S because uh, the electronic viewfinder also is very sharp. So you-, you Painting on our presentation here. What's there's, that? There's somebody painting on our, on our slide. <laughs> <laughs> the diagonal. The di <laughs> oh, yeah. I also like the Fibonacci, Fibonacci uh, uh, composition. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's your composition line, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that you from your architecture eye? <laughs> so did, uh, so, yeah. did you use only M lenses or you also shoot with, uh, with SL? And what's the difference? To be honest, I love the M lenses because I love uh, manual focus. I'm not really used to the autofocus. Uh, it's just how my uh, how I work. So with the with the SL system, uh, especially the SLS uh, uh, SL2S, um, I can use any M lenses with ease. You know, like uh, my eye doesn't get tired. Uh, if I use uh, the M camera, you know, with the M camera because it's rangefinder, um, sometimes I, I can miss the, the focus, especially if it's wide open. But with the SL um, 2S, uh, it, it's hard to miss because of the focus um, peaking mm -hmm. and also because of the bright uh, electronic viewfinder as well. So don't be afraid of using the manual uh, lens on on this camera. I, I've spoken to some of my friends who are M users, M camera users, and they're like, oh, "Should I go to the SL system?" Uh, but I love my M lenses. I said, "Don't be afraid. Just get the adapter and and put it in, and you'll see that that it's so easy to use the manual lens on, on this camera." So you would definitely recommend those for everybody who is yes. Who was maybe I, concerned about the rangefinder? Uh, if they are not can can take the rangefinder, then they can go for the SL. Exactly, so exactly. Because because sometimes they complain about the um, electronic viewfinder in the on the M camera is laggy, right? But with the SL, it's real time, so it, you know you have no problem shooting. Like the the video that I actually made for this presentation, I posted it on my Instagram. I'm using the SL2S with the M lens, the, the manual M lens, uh, Noctilux at wide open and 90% of the shots are actually handheld. So I was trying to demonstrate how easy it is to find and to keep the focus and also um, how stable the camera is because it's got the internal stabilizer if i'm not mistaken right lucas yeah, right I, this is the the uh, one of the main advantages for the in-body stabilizer that it works with every lens so if you have a stabilizer yep. in the lens of course you have to use that respective lens but when it is in the in the body it works with every lens and this makes it very yes. nice for m lenses exactly and i can feel the difference a lot from sl1 and the sl2s how uh, the noctilux on on the camera feels a lot smoother in the result. And also, also on the photograph, somehow it, 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 it seems sharper. Like I, I actually nail, nail all, of the, all of the focus because of the stabilizer, I think. Okay, Tommy, thank you very much. Uh, very yeah. nice pictures. And I, I, when I saw the first one, I already thought like, what the hell lens is this? And when you say, <laughs> like, wow. Every, like, everything's oh, natural. Oh. Everything was in my garden. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Then we go on with Enche. And I yeah. have to say your, your pictures really make me sick of not traveling. So thank, thank you for <laughs> reminding me being stuck here. And at the same way, it's, it's beautiful uh, the landscape uh, pictures that we see from you over here. So how was thank your you. experience and how did you use the SL2S? 
Yeah, I'm a user of uh, Leica SL, the Type 601, the first generation. And when I tried this uh, new one, and uh, I immediately saw the improvement, especially in the dynamic range. And uh, in the first generation is around like 13 something stuff. And now I think it's 14.5. So I can pull up the shadow easily. Like you see in the, these pictures, it's a sunrise. In the sunrise and usually it's uh, very hot in the in the sky and then it's very usually very dark in the, the valley yeah mm -hmm. and uh it's very easy to see the gradation and every detail from the very um, bright part of the sky and then the, also the, mm -hmm. uh, the dark part so that's uh, one of the advantage i think from uh, the like sl uh, 2s and the color also more, uh, I noticed it's more warm, a little bit more warm, so it's uh, give uh, some warmer feelings than the original one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In interesting. I, I've already heard that from, from some others that they say the colors in the Leica SL2S, they are s super nice. Uh, we had one one guy in Singapore at the at the test drive this weekend, and he say he was shooting chili with the like a two S L two S, and he looked through the viewfinder, and he say the chili looks more chilly through the camera than in in, in real life. So uh, <laughs> this may, may, makes it even better uh, for you as as landscape photographer. What is important for you in the camera? What does yeah. it need to have? I, I would assume that you need to have very big resolution that you can zoom in a lot. And uh, yeah. so what, what is important for you? I think uh, people mistaken uh, me as a landscape photographer, but actually I'm more like a general photographer <laughs> type of uh, thing. And, uh, uh, you, but uh, you can say that I'm more like a travel photographer because I like to travel. And in travel, you should, uh, not only landscape but also the people living there uh, also the of, of, of course the landscape but uh, different from a pure landscape photographer i don't use a lot of uh, equip equipment for example i don't carry a very big tree or tripod i don't i don't carry like a filter set it's a cum cumbersome for me for to move and set the filter so uh, every everything that i shoot from uh, with uh, like a uh, SL2S without filter, but because of the dynamic range is uh, so good and the color is so good without filter, so I feel that it's very good for me as a travel. And also for, uh, for example, when I shoot portrait, you already already mentioned that the, the it has a warm, more warm uh, color, nice uh, to make the skin tone a little bit warmer. So uh, pleasing to look at something like that. And also, this uh, I like as a travel photographer. I like the, of course, the speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So twenty-four megapixel actually um, depends. It depends if you get can get like a very good sharp image with a good technique with a good lens. Yeah. Of course, the Leica SL lenses that I use, uh, twenty-four ninety and ninety-two eighty and sixty thirty-five. Everything is very very good. It's sharp edge to edge. So. Whenever you get like very good image in 24, you can blow it up easily without losing any quality. And also actually, um, I like to try the multi-shot feature, but I cannot find it in the menu. Uh, and I just uh, read the manual and then I found it, 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 it is in the drive mode, drive mode setting. So I, I missed it. So in this camera, actually we can, <laughs> we can do uh, six, uh, 96 megapixel. Yeah. In multi shot, maybe I'll try it again. And I, if I need to, for example, to blow up the print with like a, a wall, something like that for wallpaper. Uh, and this camera, uh, luckily, has the feature, but I haven't tested it. But I saw a uh, 24 megapixel when I zoom in 100%. I'm very um, uh, pleased with that because mm -hmm. every uh, detail, every uh, trees that I, uh, I see. C is very sharp. Every every tree is in the in the pictures. Actually, I was about to ask you about the, the multi uh, multi shot feature, but uh, yeah, definitely do that again. And it shows <laughs> that um, even if you let's say have a opportunity like this, where you say I have a, I have a nice landscape, which I would like to have in 
more resolution than only 24, then you can go for it, you know, then you, you can do the multi-shot and it comes up with a 96 uh, million pixel image. And if that is not enough, then I, I don't know what is enough. So yeah, still have, if you ever come to the situation where you want to have more resolution, you can also do that. Yeah, I think 96 uh, megapixels is enough for uh, most of the uh, things. And also the your computers uh, can still handle it. Yeah. Because, uh, for example, SL2 147, uh, 180 something uh, megapixel is too big for the computer sometimes to computer to handle. So 96 is a good balance and you can uh, also crop and you can also uh, print big. For 187 megapixel for the uh, SL2, maybe the if you need to crop a lot, you need the uh, resolution. But anything else is 96 is very good. Yeah. Then this one I assume also very difficult to to shoot when you have such strong lightning conditions, such high yeah. contrast between uh, light and and shadows. Yeah. Usually, uh, yeah. It also I. Uh, this one uh, is very good because of, I think, lenses. Because uh, when, um, when Bernard lent me a camera and he said, what, what are you gonna do with this? And then I think that uh, we do landscape, but uh, I try also using the long lens, the telephoto, because everybody's using the, usually landscape photography, white lens is kind of boring. So I went uh, to this place in the, uh, a lot of times. So I want to try a different one and then using the SL9280, it's very sharp lens. And then I just shoot with the Leica SL2S handheld, good stabilization and then also the very clear, um, very sharp, the every tree is very sharp, even though it's in the, like you see in the haze and then the strong uh, backlight, mm -hmm. something like that. And also we, uh, also we try uh, the video in this uh, in the in the in this place is turned out very nice also yeah as i said please please go for the for the video uh, <laughs> where can they find uh, those videos uh, bernard can you share the link or is that on your social media accounts to to get the videos i think like uh, store jakarta just have uh, the youtube yeah in the youtube okay. channel yeah. uh, like okay. uh, store jakarta the link should be shared already. Okay. But we'll check again. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And then this one is uh, also demonstrating the camera and help. And then uh, we can see really clear, even though in the foggy morning. Yeah. You can see, you can see even the, the trees over here. <laughs> yeah, so there's no, even with your eye, you would probably not be able to see yeah. that. Yeah, sure. very, very cool. long, well, very long uh, lenses. That lens very good, 90 to 80, one of the sharpest that I test. It's even sharper than uh, some primes uh, fixed lens. And uh, with the image stabilization, I, I think maybe some people were afraid to get it. I mean, of course, it's a, it's a long mm -hmm. lens. But uh, with the image stabilization, you you can uh, use it pretty well, I would say, in a in a good shutter speed. Yes, yes, sure. It it really helps because uh, the longer the lens, and then uh, you tend to shake a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so the image stabilization from the lens and the body works perfectly. And then when you compose the pictures, mm -hmm. you can see the stabilization working. Mm -hmm. So it's not jittery. So easy to get the 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 perfect composition. And usually, because I'm not a pure uh, landscape, pure landscape photography, maybe they shoot um, in on the tripod all the time. But me, I only use the tripod when it's too dark. For example, I uh, the shutter speed is like 20 seconds or 10 seconds, I use tripod. But if I can get like a, one, uh, the it's uh, brighter and then I can use a uh, faster shutter speed. I will, I will prefer to take the camera and lenses and then run around so I can get the, a lot more uh, different kind of pictures rather than only one, one spot, one composition kind of thing. 
and then your your last one now you prove that you're not only a landscape photographer <laughs> so yeah fun, uh, also yeah, the is the speed and also the details in the net uh, very yeah. nice shot it's perfect yeah, in the in the in the third days in the third days uh, when i'm uh, videoing and also the to uh, try out the sl2s mm -hmm. um there are very heavy rain in the morning but that's exactly what I needed to, you know, to try out the Leica SL2S to the max because it will be, you know, wet all over the camera and lenses. And then also uh, I need, uh, because of the, in the very early in the morning, the, there is no sunlight, very, very, very dim light. And then the ISO, I think, were quite high here in the, in the picture. And then you can, if you uh, look, Clearly, you can see there is a water drop. This uh, raining, still raining very heavily. And then I try uh, continue shooting. And usually, um, for uh, continue shooting, actually, some of uh, Leica photographers say that okay, actually they need only like uh, three or five is enough. Sometimes just uh, one kill, uh, one shot, one kill. But I think for this very fast moving, very fast moving things, for example, dancer and everything, if you um, it's very hard for uh, to get one shot, one kill. So uh, it's better to, you know, like a insurance. You shoot a lot and then pick the best. So I think 25 uh, frames per second, you cannot miss. You, you will get the peak moment. You, can, you will get the decisive moment by the help of the technology. <laughs> so that's uh, one of the pictures that I took with the uh, continue shooting in the rain. I think it's very uh, helpful for me. It's uh, also the uh, high ISO performance. Yes. We have one question here. And um, as you said, you are also using the, the SL and, and probably I think you also use the SL2. Um, the question is from Rhapsody. Uh, what is the difference in color when shooting landscape with the Leica SL2S? Yeah, um, I think if you don't, uh, if we don't really doing post-processing or editing. Uh, like I said, it's uh, the Leica SL2S is a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer. So uh, whenever you shoot like maybe uh, sunset, the red will be more red, orange will be more orange, something like that. Um, for the SL, the first one is more like, I think the saturation is less. Uh, but the blue, uh, I think the blue is uh, almost the same. The blue is very nice. It's very soft kind of blue. It's not like a uh, very saturated blue. It's uh, maybe like a blue, <laughs> the, the SL1. And the, uh, the different also, uh, the SL1, if we, we shoot portrait, the skin color look more vintage, like mm -hmm. for uh, vintage, like more classical look, like more classical look, but uh, the SL2S, I think is more warmer. It's, it's more like a healthy kind of, <laughs> healthy kind of uh, complexion, skin complexion. So it's, I think that it's not a good or bad, but it's, uh, it's uh, depend on your taste. And also, uh, if you are good in uh, editing, of course, you can edit to suit your taste better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Then, Bernard, is Danny with us now or? No, he hasn't. Uh, he's not able to, to log in yet. But anyway, um, and I think, yeah. And maybe, maybe you want to do a, want to do another session uh, with, with him then, or you? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's try. Let's try. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. His well, his I think his image is basically showing, uh, uh, and his video is showing something about recyclable, recyclable fashion, because he takes a lot of fashion, um, fashion photography. So please, please uh, check out his video, and and we will find a way to. Uh, to catch him. I, I don't want to uh, spoil anything uh, already. Understand. I skipped over the pictures. And as you can <laughs> okay. see in the chat box, everybody, um, there's the link for, for the videos. Uh, so uh, have a look on the on the YouTube channel for Like Us or Indonesia. And um, yeah, is there if there are any questions uh, to me, to the photographers, to whatever, um, feel free to ask. And um, but I can already say thank you very much for uh, doing that session today with me. And 
uh, to the three photographers that we had today. Uh, very cool images, uh, very different approach, definitely. So we had architectural, then we had um, portrait and photography and also landscape uh, and travel photography. Um, and it's basically covered up everything today. So uh, you don't you don't miss anything in our in our session. Uh, so like it's I, your, oh, like it's, I said, it's, it's, made so much effort to to make that possible that no no wishes open today. Yeah, it shows that the the new camera suitable for everything. Yeah, mm. <laughs> every kind of photo and video. Thank you, thank you, Lucas. Uh, so I think um, if there's any question, please share. Otherwise, uh, we we will we will end the session. We won't take uh, much more of your time. Uh, again, I, as I as I already put in the message, we have the demo unit in the store right now. Uh, you can call, contact the store at the number and arrange for your time uh, to stop by. We have different types of lenses you can try. The, the, the SL, the TL, the M lenses, the S lens, not many, uh, but you can always uh, stop by to try, you're more than welcome. Uh, uh, please call the store in advance uh, due to the limit, limited number of uh, people that we can have in the store as a safety measure. Um, other than that, um, so we have one question here, Lucas. Just wanted to ask Lucas, does the SL2 have the eye recognition or only face recognition? Mm -hmm. Because I never see small rectangle on the subject eye, only large rectangle on the face. Thank you. Crimson um, temperature. It, it actually works on an eye detection. But you don't see, as you already mentioned, you don't see the, um, let's say, the red cross on the eyes. But when when you see that the face is detected, the method of the detection is always focusing on the eyes. Uh, we don't just call that uh, eye detection. It's uh, our so-called object detection uh, focus mode that we are using, which um, where you don't have to shift in between uh, face detection or whatever detection. So we have one detection mode, and then uh, if the, the software can detect the face, it will automatically focus on the eye. So when you when you have the face inside, you just press the shutter and then you see it will be sharp on the, always the eye that is the closest to you. So let's say if you have the side, uh, side view of a person, it will always focus on the front eye. Mm. Nice thank, you. To know. Yeah. thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, so we will upload this video a bit later on, on our YouTube channel too. Uh, if there's other, no other question, then thank you. Thank you, Lucas, for your time. Uh, good okay. to have you here. Uh, we hope to see That's you fun. again soon in, in our next sessions. Okay, uh, everyone who was here today, yeah. thank you very much for joining. And thank you very much. Bye -bye. Have a good evening. Thank have you, a, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.